hymn number 176, Holy, 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 number 176. the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This Mass is intended to pray for Charles Fulbes and Thomas Costello. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to the Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done and what I've failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, may the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us life everlasting. Kiri <laughs> 
your holy name for, for you never deprive of your guidance those who set firm on the foundation of your love through our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unit of the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side. Denounce, let us denounce him. All those who are my friends are on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped. Then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble they will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame, to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, you who test the just, who probe mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them, for to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise to the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord. to you, O Lord, for the 
time of your favor, O God, in your great kindness answer me with your constant help. Answer me, O Lord, for bounteous is your kindness. In your great mercy turn toward me. second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man sin entered the world, and through sin, death. And thus death came to all men, inasmuch as all sinned. For up to the time of the law, sin was in the world. Though sin is not accounted when there is no law. But death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not sin after the pattern of the trespass of Adam, who is the type of the one who was to come. But the gift is not like the transgression, for if by the transgression of the one, the many died. How much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many? The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you. Jesus said to the twelve, Fear no one, nothing is concealed that will not that will not be revealed nor secret that will not be known what I say to you in the darkness speak in the light what you hear whispered proclaim on the housetops and do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul Rather be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all the hairs of your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. 
But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, we are happy to be around this sacred table, the altar, to celebrate the 12th Sunday in Ordinary Time, Year A. The message from the scripture readings that we have heard is about being men and women of courage, Christians of courage, Catholics of courage. We are called to preach Christ through our words and our actions and live a life of Christian witness without fear. So we need to ask ourselves, are we courageous enough? Are we bold enough to live our faith? There could be opposition here and there, but I should be able to stand out armed with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, especially that of courage, that I can live my faith without fear. The first reading has told us how the prophet Jeremiah trusted in the power of God while he faced opposition for his prophetic ministry. He was intimidated by attacks upon his character, but was never afraid. He spoke out in the name of the Lord. Is our example in giving credible witness to the Lord in our Christian discipleship. The psalmist in today's responsorial psalm, the psalm which we have taken, Psalm 69, trusted in God even when he was misunderstood and ill-treated by his brothers and relatives. Again, the same boldness that the psalmist is giving us a wonderful and eloquent example. In the second reading, Paul the writer has assured the Christians in Rome that they needed not to be afraid of opposition, both because they share in the death of Jesus and because they are united with Christ, the new Adam in his resurrection. Today's gospel reading, again going into the same direction, is taken from the end of Jesus' instruction to his disciples as he sent forth the disciples to carry on his mission of preaching and healing. He has spoken to them about living a simple life and to expect opposition and rejection. After having foretold future oppos opposition and persecution, Jesus encouraged, encouraged his disciples st to stand firm. We have heard this mentioned three times. They were urged, do not be afraid, do not fear. And that has been repeated three times. Do not be afraid. Instead of shrinking from their task, they are to proclaim the gospel boldly because they will be protected just as Jeremiah was assured of God's protection. Hence, Jesus commands his disciples not to fear their persecutors. And of course, the same message is our message. Do not be afraid of persecutors, of detractors. He presents before them the image of the sparrow to reinforce the disciples' trust and hope in God. The readings hint on the opposition we future Christians will encounter as we carry on the work of Jesus in the world. And they encourage us to persevere in doing the work of Jesus. The readings assure us that we will be successful despite the opposition we encounter. And so that should encourage us, brothers and sisters, in our Christian witness today. Living the Christian life is never simple, it's never easy, and a coward can never be a Christian. We have seen that reflected in the life of the martyrs. 
shedding their blood. The body can be killed, but the soul cannot be overcome. Only God has that power. And so that should encourage us in our discipleship. Not be anxious. We have heard that mentioned in the gospel text. Christ has said, we are worth more than the sparrows. And so that should encourage us. Giving a Christian witness at our place of work. Witnessing to Christ wherever we are, among our peers. Witnessing to the gospel message at the family level. Parents to their children and children to their parents. Challenging one another in living authentically the message of Christ. And when we are opposed, we should be encouraged that we shall not be overcome. The gospel message cannot be overcome by worldly powers. This is what we have heard, again reflected in the life of the prophet Jeremiah. O Lord of hosts, you who test the just, who probe the mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them. For to you I have entrusted my cause. He's persecuted, but he's never overcome. And so in our witness, brothers and sisters, there are many challenges that prompt us to kind of give up on our Christian witness. I want to give an example. The choice for life. A Christian is one that chooses life above all else. The choice to stand for our, say, the sacramental life. I need to remain true to my sacramental life. But as you do that, there is opposition. A Christian is one that does not deviate. Don't deviate from the choice that you have made, the choice to live as a Christian and the choice to follow Christ as you should. The choice to come and observe Sunday, for example. You know, some people again encounter opposition coming to church. Some people again feel that uncomfortable. I should go ahead and give my Christian witness, not be cowardly. A Christian is one that is bold, that is ready to live one's Christian life without fear, without being a coward, without being timid. We can't do that. We invoke the Holy Spirit for the gift of courage, for the gift of fortitude. And may the Eucharist that we are going to receive again encourage us on our discipleship through Christ our Lord. stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things we are made, for us men and for us salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For us sake was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. May we now present our prayers and petitions. For the Pope's monthly intention, that the international community may commit a concrete way to ensuring the abolition of torture and guaranteed support to victims and their families. We pray to the Lord. Lord, share our prayer. For Bishop Sean, that he find great blessings from having named Father Sean Carey now as official pastor of this parish of St. Jude's right here in Waltham. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering from invisible disabilities, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick and in distress in any way, especially those listed in the bulletin, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of the faithful departed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And today, we pray in a special way for Charles Forbes, Jr. and Thomas Costello, for whom this Mass is being celebrated. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May the Holy Spirit also renew our commitment to living the Christian life. We pray to the Lord. God, our Father, this is our prayer we make to you through your Son, Jesus Christ. We make this prayer through Christ, our Lord. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. For the praise and glory of his name. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that, cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is true, right, and just, our duty and our salvation, and always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unit of the Trinity made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in the company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we acclaim. Holy. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy there for these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have failed us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring out the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Sean our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be coherent to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unit of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those to trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you say to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the supper of the Lamb.
renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Brothers and sisters, my name is Father Vincent Kafuma, and I stay at this parish. I'm a student at the Boston College. I'm happy to preside over this Mass because our priests are somewhere for a certain apostolate. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Mary, help of Christians, pray for us. Mary, help of Christians. The Lord be with you. May the Lord bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Wish you a beautiful weekend. Hymn number 173. Holy God, we praise thy name. Number 173, and we will sing verses 1, 2, and 4.